Hello and welcome back to Scarlet Heroes Solo Urban Adventures. We are done with the series. So now here's for the final verdict and my thoughts. First, we're going to talk about the rules, the pros and cons of the urban adventures, basically where it's great, where it's not so great, and my takeaway. Then we'll talk about the series. I'll bring up the AI tools I used and the pros and cons of them. Finally, what to expect next on this channel. So first off, the rules. I think they work to give a framework for the story, but I think it's good to break the rules a little bit or stretch them or just use them as a jumping off point when you have a better idea that will suit your storytelling a bit more. If you saw the series, you probably noticed I did that more than a few times, especially in the last episode. Some rules can be a little bit hard to track or to remember. The one that gave me the most challenge was rolling after an action scene. Um, I didn't really keep track of it all that well. And I was constantly worried I would make a mistake. I'm pretty sure I won't be the only one. There's probably a way to just write the number on top of your character sheet, but it's just something you have to track that feels a little bit counterintuitive, I think. Also, the combat can be a little bit harsh or random. Like there's a lot of randomness when you use the tables from the book. And uh, some of my early fights were very tough. And some of the fights near the end, nowhere near as much. Though the end fight was very rough. For the pros, I think the encounter tables are really good. I think the oracle they provide in the first few pages is pretty good. Um, it's a little bit more simple than ones like Mythic. So it's good if you're a beginner, but also for me, it was more than enough for this adventure. And the other tables, well, the random tables and the ones that are meant to guide the adventure creation process. I think there's a lot of them and they're pretty good. So I had fun with them. They inspired me. Overall, I think it's easy to adapt to various universes, you know, it's the most straightforward to just do something that's kind of medieval fantasy, a little bit like Dungeons and Dragons. But I could see myself play some kind of uh, sci-fi or horror, modern. It wouldn't be very hard since the rules are so simple and general. Now the cons, I think it can become a little bit repetitive. So, you know, if you were to take a character from level one all the way to level five, would all the stories be all that different? I'm not quite certain. Um, to counteract that, you could probably do some urban adventures and then some wilderness and then some dungeons, mix and match, go with what uh, works with the story. Maybe even have some stories start urban and end in a dungeon. Could be a bit repetitive if you do only one game mode, but I'm sure by using your imagination, there's ways around it. And it can feel a little bit overly random. I already mentioned for the fighting system. But I mean, just in general, I would like all the random tables you're using. It's not like a branching narrative. It really does like you'll roll a dice and oh, that's what's got to happen for the scene. So sometimes it won't necessarily fit your story. So for that, I would encourage you to just use your judgment. And if it's good to go with random, then go with that. But if you feel like it makes no sense, you can roll again or pick yourself. So my takeaway is that while this is better as a starting point, as a way to get inspiration, then as something to follow to the letter. It's not how I used it in my story. And I think if I did follow the rules exactly as they were laid out, 
I don't think I would have had such a great time. And frankly, the ending would have been super underwhelming. So I think it's pretty good. I like the urban adventures. But use your judgment and that's how you're going to get the most out of it. Now for the series itself. Just like in Sariel and the Sword of Azatoth, which was the series I did right before this one, this was super fun to make. I love doing those series. And this time I did a format that was overall a little bit shorter. Shorter in the number of episodes overall, but also each episode tended to be shorter than in that series. And I think that was really good. It allowed me to make them quicker. And I think it's easier to uh, retain people's attention. So I'll probably uh, continue like that. For the AI, for those who are interested, I used 11 labs for the voices, Stable Diffusion Excel and Flux for the images, and Life Portrait. As a note, Flux is a lot better than Stable Diffusion Excel as far as following what you ask of it, but it takes a bit more resources. So I was using both. The pros of those AI. Well, I use AI because it's more time efficient and I get images that are more polished than if I was drawing them myself. I'm not an excellent artist and to make, you know, images that are fully detailed, shaded and everything, it would take hours. So that's why I like using AI. Uh, Flux in particular and Life Portrait, I'm really loving them right now. And uh, yeah, I think they make my episodes a lot more dynamic. So I'll probably keep using them at least in the foreseeable future. For the cons now, so this was my second project using 11 labs for the voices, but I'm starting to get frustrated with how monotone the voices are. I was trying to get a little bit more energy out of them, I was having to generate them a lot to mess with the voices and the results. I'm not a huge fan. I would say that's the weakest part of my series. So. Next time around, I will attempt to use some real voices. Me and my soon-to-be wife will do them. So I think that will be pretty interesting to try out. Um, I could also try a mixture of AI and real voices. I think that could be a good compromise. If there's some really good AI voices, I could use them for one character or two. But next time, it'll be real voices. That way I can have real emotions. <laughs> Takeaway, well, AI has its own intricate workflows. Some people who have never used AI don't realize that you actually still have to do, well, to basically develop a, te a technique. So it's not just press a button and you get the perfect result, but it is such a time saver. Doing everything via AI would be completely unnecessary and counterproductive, however. So I don't think I will go towards more AI. I'll probably go towards a little bit less. So what's next on the channel? Well, more rules videos. Those do the best. And I like doing them. More stories. I love doing them, so I'll keep at it and probably a new format, something more simple and direct. And it'll probably look like this video. Something I can do, I can get out, get the information to you guys. And the presentation doesn't have to be so animated and intricate like my bigger rules videos. Something that's a little bit in between. So it'll probably be for smaller topics related to the larger rules. So let's say I just want to bring up a little additional thing to say 
the adventure crafter well i'll do a video like this instead of doing it uh super long form and with a ton of production will we see more scarlet heroes i hope so i definitely want to do another small little adventure to uh, test the wilderness and the dungeon so i already did them in sariel and the sword of azatot but you know, having a series just focused on that, maybe three episodes, four episodes, five at most, I would say. I think that's something I want to do in the near future. And as far as other ideas, well, there will be more roles, different games, most certainly. And at some point, I would love to make an adventure series based on an existing adventure module. So something already written that I would add my story on top of it to adapt it. There's a ton of modules that are like free. There's a ton that are like made by people. I'm not quite sure what I would pick. Maybe I would even pick something that just came out. But I would start from there, use it as a jumping off point and probably do a little review in the process. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!